I chose this path. I molded this flesh. I gave up my wings for this chance. Suicide. For a god must first die in the heavens in order to be born on earth. I sacrifice. Of course, I was advised to rewrite, to reconsider. They said, those people have suffered a mortal wound beyond healing. If you go down there, there will be no happy ending. You know this. Zeus himself pulled me on the side and said, The last time a god dwelled amongst men, they crucified him and he had not since returned. I do admire your willingness to go down there and save them. But those people are doomed. You'll be doing them justice if you bring floods and start anew. There's a flaw in your design. You gave them too much compassion. Yet they cannot reserve the same consideration for their kind. Why? He asked. What are you trying to prove? You are never one for sculptures, scriptures and songs. How are they going to recognize you? What is the use? Even Buddha pulled me on the side and said, It is too late, old friend. Their hearts are riddled with self-hate. They have abandoned their tongue. Zeus might be right. Death would be mercy. But when I looked down, I saw something in you. Something old. Something that resembles an ancient light, a spark last seen when earth was forged, long thought to have burned out, yet, yet it lives in you, still flickering. Somehow, hope. You see, I have to be here. But to be here, there are things that I have to sacrifice, like the recollection of the heavens for at least I'm of age, a torn page. Wisdom stored in the breast of a woman of which I chose to be born. The decision of a mother is paramount. Parallel of that of choosing my name. You see, you have not read all of the books. There are hidden pages in catatomb passages. Whispers in cathedral corridors with tainted windows, concrete floors. Time. Time betrayed your eldest. The norm aging dog. Yes, what was once seen as pure is now seen as flawed, but I am here now. All will be revealed. All will be revealed. Jimela? Hello. Lekai? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, my name is Masai. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, are you guys excited? I mean, you can do better than that, you paid. <laughs> Are you guys excited? Yeah. yeah. So, I come from a place called Mahofe. Most of you might never, never heard of this place. It's between the townships of Seshiro and the villages of Muleji. Right there, we built our home literally out of anything. It was a cardboard here, a street sign, newspapers to cover the holes. What? magic. We built our homes. Ah, but do not pity us. This is a story about how we danced, and man, we danced. I remember Cedric, my neighbor. I could tell you about his ways, about how prison was his second home. Every time we returned with a different scar, we whispered stories about how many men he might have killed. 
This could easily be a poem about gangsters we call uncles, but instead, this is a poem about dancing and man he danced, who take out speakers and place them out the gate for all to witness. If you could play them any louder, Lord have mercy on mothers with sleeping babies. His taste was regay. He was dance shirtless with his chest exposed like a guitar, his ribs for strings. In one hand, he held a bottle, he danced with it like his lover. With every kiss, he weakened his knees as they danced to the clickings and the clackings of a lucky Dube song or a Peter Charles tune. Now remember Paul. And Judith, yes. front opposite. I could tell you about how some mornings her bruises painted vividly last night's screams and how Paul is in hospital because she stabbed him again. This could be a poem about lovers that fight each other but yet find their way back into each other's arms. Lovers that kiss with their teeth. But instead, this is about their dance move and man, they dance. They dance as though they borrowed each other bones and neither skeleton could fit for either skin. You should have seen how they had adjusted each other. How they held each other like eggs. Eggs they were late to scramble. But right now, their dance partners in bongo muffins, tatis gubu, has calmed these two tornadoes into whirlwinds as their feet commanded dust to rise. Ah. I remember Braoba. I'm an old timer. If the 80s were a person, a short, small, bald headed man, clean, dressed with a brandy too big for his size, he spoke Africans fluently, Malaydi. See, that's why his bars bought him this. That's why his bars bought him that. That's why his boss bought him a new Toyota Skyline. These were rumors by jealous men that not dare ask Braoba. Rumors that did not bother Braoba, especially when he's dancing. See, he fancy jazz. He danced like he had ants in his pants, a puppeteer of his own feet. You should have seen how he slithered across the room. He moved like something was pulling him. And when the keys came, he danced with his fingers like he knew the pianist personally. Like he helped to write the notes. I remember... Ah, oh, remember Auntie Selena. Corner house. I could tell you about how she never stopped waiting for her husband to return from exile. How she refused to accept that he's the price we paid for this democracy. How every Sunday she cleaned her house spotless, hoping that maybe she will show up someday. But instead, this is about her dance moved. As Ezzy Zondi introduced the next song, the Manhattan or the Celine Dion, she danced slowly moved carefully as though the very hands of time held her around her waist she missed him she would not admit it but we all knew that she missed him she would sing I remember New Year's Eve. I could tell you about how some mornings we only had 100 shooters. A box of black spiders. Fancy fireworks lit up the sky in neighboring neighborhoods. But we had wonders of our own. You should have seen how we moved. Walls. There were no walls. We even went into Auntie Selena's yard for the first time. Braopa was hooting his skyline like he belonged to other men. And Cedric, he was still dancing with his lover. Oh, son, 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 o